Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be building an aircraft which I never heard of before I bought this kit and that is the Vulti Vengeance Mark II dive bomber. This is from Arc Models which is a Russian company I believe and as you can see very clearly from the front of the box this is an X-Frog slash Novo kit. Arc Models do a lot of these reboxings. It's also a very old kit originating from 1970 but I don't mind that too much especially as it does say on the side of the box very clearly this is a 1970s kit. I thought that was quite honest of them and uh, there are a couple of other model companies who would uh, do well to follow that lead in uh, reboxing old kits. So let's look at some of ARC's other models before we look inside the box. I couldn't find a website for them so I had to rely on Scalemates. As you can see here there's quite an eclectic collection of kits. We've got some 135th scale military uh, kits. We've got the 196 scale Lancaster. Some more 135th scale stuff. Some ships in various scales. Most of these are reboxings, but I do believe here that the battleship Pachemkin in 1 to 400th scale is actually an ARC model's original mold. And I believe the same is true for the Royal Sovereign as well. We've got airliners in here, all kinds of interesting kits. As I say, most of them will be reboxings, but uh, still interesting to look at. It's not often that you see a Soviet Air Force hurricane out of the box, for example. And looking back inside the box, we've got a small bag of sprues. Let's start by looking at the paint instructions. So we've got two paint schemes here. Both are dark earth and dark green. One of them with a white tail. And then they've got a, br a blue underside, which depending on your sources is either azure blue or sky blue. But I'll come more to painting later on in the video. We've got some instructions with the usual don't eat the paint, don't drink the glue kind of thing. And then a fairly straightforward set of instructions. One step to build the cockpit, one for the propeller and the engine, one for the undercarriage, one for the wings, a couple to put everything together. You'll notice as I open this kit that the panel line detail is all raised, as you'd expect from a kit of this age. There's no rivet detail or anything like that, of course. Very simple, not really detail on the inside of the cockpit. And these odd shaped wings as well. But they do seem to fit together reasonably well. We have a single piece for the cockpit, which includes the floor and the seats, and that's essentially all the detail we get. We do get two figures. Uh, they're usable. They're not the best figures I've seen, but they're not the worst either. And some clear parts, which I think could be described very much in the same way. They're not the thinnest or clearest, but they're not the worst. Finally, some decals. There does look like a little bit of uh, banding on those roundels there. Of course the roundels don't have the red because this is for um, Far East markings and they typically didn't have the red there to avoid confusion with the Japanese markings. And that's our kit. So let's start the build process. Not much for me to say really during this build process so I'm going to leave you with the images and a little bit of music.
One thing I did have to work out is how this uh, glass canopy would fit. You can see the glass there at the rear. I couldn't quite work out how it went over that rear um, gunner. And then I realized that really we just need to cut that bit um, cut that bit out that it shouldn't actually be there in the first place, that the rear of the canopy should just be open to the elements. The kit does include the option to have the landing gear raised and it's got a nice single part to do that. For some reason, maybe because I just didn't feel like fiddling with the landing gear, I decided to use that single part and build it gear up. One thing you don't get is the option to build the bomb bay doors open. And with the build sequence done, it was time to think about the paint scheme. As we saw, both paint schemes are dark earth and dark green, which is fine. However, I've got a few aircraft coming up that I'm going to be building in that scheme. I've got a Mark 1 Spitfire, I've got lots of Bomber Command heavy bombers. I wanted something a little bit different. Now I looked at various reference photos of the uh, Vengeance. You can see some here for the Australian Air Force which have the same scheme there with the white tail. And also some RAF versions with exactly the same uh, camo scheme. So I decided instead just to go a little bit out there. I did see that the AZ Models Kit has a foliage green option and that foliage green of course was used by the Australian Air Force so I decided to go for that with a sky blue underside. Foliage green doesn't seem to be regularly available in many uh, paint manufacturers uh, ranges. I decided to mix something I thought would be decent from some flat green and to darken it a little bit of XF11 JN green. For any highlights, I mix in a small amount of buff to lighten the paint. This is my base coat. And then here is the aircraft once I've added a little bit of the buff and painted some slightly lighter panels on the wings. And particularly here, the elevators and the rudder are in a lighter colour. You'll also notice that I've left the tail in the main camo colour, but I've painted the nose white. As far as I can tell, this is not historically accurate, um, but I don't mind, I like the way it looks. For the blue underside, I mix some XF19 Sky Grey with a tiny amount of flat blue, and then some white just to lighten it a little bit more. Here's the result of painting that, and I think it came out quite nicely. It looks a little bit more blue in real life than on the camera, but I, I think that's nice. After applying some spots of VMS gloss varnish with the airbrush, I put the decals on. 
You can see there is that kind of slightly lighter inner ring on the blue, but I don't think it's a big deal. These went down very nicely with some Tamiya Mark fits. I really love the green colour here and the way it works with those blue Australian roundels. Then it was a case of doing some detail painting. So a very dark grey for the tyres. Using the sponge chipping technique with some aluminium colour for the leading edge of the wings. the walkway to the cockpit. and also on the propeller. Our figures were given a coat of blue I imagine that in the Far East, the air crew would probably not wear this exact same uniform as uh, the European theatre, but you know, these figures are, so that's how I painted them. There we go. I don't think they look too bad considering they're tiny and uh, they're going to be hidden behind some glass. For the weathering, I took some Aptai Lung 502 oil paint, thinned it slightly, and originally I was planning to put some on the wing and sort of uh, blend it in and give a kind of faded, um, dusty kind of look to it. I ended up with the wing looking like this, which wasn't quite the way I wanted it to be. Of course the great thing about oil paints is you can manipulate them for quite a long time after they've been applied. So the next day after deciding I really didn't like that look, I took some uh, tissue paper and some cotton buds, dampened them with thinner, and removed a lot of the oil paint going in the direction of the airflow across the wing. I think that left things looking a bit better with some sort of uh, dirty, dusty streaks across the wing. I also gave a heavy wash of a dark brown colour to the cockpit. and a pin wash with the engine grease colour to the engine. A few days later, when the oil paints were sufficiently dry, I gave the whole model a coat of VMS matte varnish. I've moved towards this now rather than my Tamiya spray cans, and I'm really happy with the result. It's a really dead flat finish. And of course, airbrushing this varnish is a lot more efficient than using a spray can and a lot cheaper as well. Now I did make an attempt to add some exhaust stains using some uh, X19 smoke, which really didn't come out very well at all. But at this point I felt I was ready to finish the model. So I, uh, I left those as they were. 
Let's look at the final result. So guys, that was my build of the ARC models Vorti Vengeance, based on the 1970 mold from Frog Models. Not a huge amount to say about this one. I feel like this would have been a good kit for the time. The fit was generally pretty good. Details pretty basic, including the cockpit. Panel lines of course are raised. I did have fun building this, and I do like the foliage green scheme. It's not going to have pride of place on my model shelf, but it is something that, you know, I enjoy building, so I think worth it for the price. Now I am aware that recently on the channel I've been building lots of aircraft. Um, that's just happened naturally, really. I just seem to feel like building aircraft kits. But I am also aware that lots of you guys like to see armour kits, and I do have some more armour in progress. Somehow I tend to end up with sort of four or five kits, all 90% done. Um, rather than having them sort of spread out properly. But uh, here are a couple of kits that I have got in progress and, and they are 90% done. First of all we have the Tamiya SDKFZ-71 which is the half track with the anti-aircraft gun in the back. I've got a couple of sets of goodies for this one as well so I won't quite be building this one out of the box. This is almost done so I'm hoping once the summer holidays come around I'll be able to just push through to the end on that. I've also of course still got the Ram Tiger diorama in progress, again that's almost done, it just needs a bit more weathering on the diorama and uh, the vehicle and the diorama to be unified a bit more as well. Of course the Dora is almost there too. I do have one more aircraft in progress too and that is this F4M Phantom from Italeri. So if you'd like to see those builds and lots more coming up, then do remember to hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Before we go, let me say thank you very much to my wonderful Patreon supporters. You can see their names on the screen now. And without these guys, a lot of what we do here on this channel just would not be possible. So thank you very much for your support, guys. It really is appreciated. So guys, thank you very much for watching. And until the next video, perhaps you will like one of these suggestions from YouTube.